Hello there and welcome back to another one of my videos. In this series it's all about cranks, rods and stroke. This episode is all about the Conrod. Oh yes, I know Kickback Garage is going to enjoy this little episode. <laughs> Right gentlemen, first of all we need to understand what is the object of our conrod? What does it what does it function? What does it do? It's connecting the piston to the crank and forces the crank to rotate when our fuel and air mixture is detonated. When the fuel and air mixture in the piston in the combustion area is detonated the conrod, the energy is passed through the conrod, energy passing through conrod, rotating crank. Comes back up, another detonation of gases, another ignition, and down it goes again. So that's the principle of it. But energy also passes through the walls of the barrel and through your cylinder head. So you have losses of energy. Nothing is ever 100% efficient. So there's always energy lost in different ways. But the energy that we're thinking about is the energy that we're transmitting through the conrod. Now, when the conrod angle is very important. So as you, your gases explode, the angle of this conrod changes during rotation. So as it's as the crank rotates, the rod angle changes. Yeah. But with a longer rod, the angle remains straighter. It's got less angle. And we'll prove that by looking at a different crank. Here's the same 58mm stroke with an 116mm rod. Now, as it rotates, this angle isn't as steep. So therefore, if you can imagine pushing, the force, the energy is pushing down in this direction, but your rod is transmitting it up this direction. Now, the straighter the push on the pin, the straighter you push, the easier it is for that energy to rotate the crank. The steeper the angle, the more difficult it is for the energy to rotate the crank, if that's understanding. So, it's simple. It's like this. When you're trying to push something, and I'm pushing straight, that is my optimum push. That is where I get my most force, when I'm pushing directly straight. If I'm like this, with my hands up in the air, I'm really struggling to push things in that direction because the energy that I'm pushing is being forced upwards. It's simple. So therefore, the longer the rod, the straighter the push, the more energy is being transmitted into rotating the crank. That's as simple as I can explain it. So now you say, why don't we just have extremely long rods, if that's the case? Well, the unfortunate drawback is, the longer your rod, the more reciprocating mass you have, and the more strength you have to put in the rod to stop it from breaking. Uh, so it is basically always a balance between uh, weight one advantage is becomes another disadvantage. So therefore, the longer rod eventually becomes a disadvantage because it becomes simply too heavy. So to demonstrate, or hopefully demonstrate, we're gonna balance our buzz wangle on the con rod. Turn it on. And zero it, come on. Okay, so 
We've zeroed it. Obviously, there's slight inclination in the rod already because uh, the width of the rod is tapered. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go around to 45 degrees with this rod, and we're looking at it's just rule of thumb just to demonstrate seven degrees, and then we're going to come round to the 90 degrees angle which will be there and we're looking at 15.5 degrees is that correct? yeah 15.5 so we've got at 45 we've got 7 degrees and at 90 we've got 15.5 we'll make a little note 7 and 15 0.5 so we'll do that now again okay oh, we'll have to just zero it <coughs> damn you should stay in one place for me okay there you go right <coughs> now this rod is uh, the, the standard rod so the angle is going to be different so we'll just rotate it to the 45 and there we got 9.4 degrees and then up to the 90 and we got 17.6 degrees Okay, uh, this is our uh, program that we have for rod speeds and rod G and acceleration. So as we can see here, I've already put in some parameters, 2000 RPM, 58 mil stroke rod and 107 millimeter rod length. So the 107 millimeter rod length, we can see it's pulling 2.49 g's of acceleration so if we change that's at maximum acceleration it goes down to uh, uh, this will be top dead bottom dead center where it goes to zero but this is your maximum amount of acceleration so we change the rod length and we've now got 2.45 g's so it changes the amount of g's so there's less g's with the 116 mil rod, so the acceleration is less. Yeah, I know in the uh, previous uh, episode we were talking about the actual pressure that the pins push through, and uh, Gran Turismo actually gave me a message and says uh, that they're using between five and seven tons of pressure. So thanks from GT there for giving us that information. With the GT cranks, another quality quality item and I do like the uh, on the GT cranks that you've got that option of the 16 or 18 mil uh, small end bearing brilliant so when you're using shorter compression like pistons like this is that better to use a longer rod or machine the barrel down Hmm. See, Mr. Dave Webster, in the past, used to shorten his barrels and that would raise your crankcase compression because you're, you're reducing the volume there. But that was okay when everybody was using uh, reverse cone clubmans and things like that. But once, it, once people started using good quality expansion chambers, they discovered that you need to increase crankcase volume, so therefore you've got more volume for the expansion chamber to suck from. So bigger transfer ports, bigger area in the crankcase volume means that your expansion chamber can suck a bigger volume through into the combustion uh, area. So you're sucking more gases far quicker through from the volume behind the piston up into your um, combustion area. So that's why we are using longer rods another reason shortened compression height pistons 
advantage, lower mass. More stability, lower mass. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little episode on Conrods and uh, I'll see you next time.